And now we're going to have a classic example of what I said in the final days, uh, last day's final advice video. The questions do not go in order of difficulty. Say it again. The questions do not go in the order of difficulty. Stop holding that. I still have people commenting, oh, I still feel this question was misplaced. I will respond to that comment later and link you to the are there misplaced questions video. There are not. There is no claim anywhere on the test that they go in order of difficulty from 1 to 25. Many of you say, I just feel I shouldn't, I shouldn't have to give up on a problem and I feel like I'm, I should, if, I, if I can't do that one, I can't do later problems. This would be like trying to make a basket and you have to go up against 10 players guarding you. And the fourth one is LeBron James. And you just refuse to go, no, I've got to defeat LeBron. If I can't defeat LeBron, I won't be able to defeat the sixth grade student, you know, that's waiting to block my next shot. Uh, really? <laughs> okay, no, you don't want to do that. Earlier, I had trouble on number 11. I had trouble on another one, number, I forget which one it was, 13, I think. Took me a little bit of time to process and find the best groove and path by which to do it. On 11, I made like two or three calculation errors. I think I said I lost two minutes. Maybe it was more like four, right? And so at some point when you get on that process, you're going to have to skip. And when you get to a problem like this, this is like the kindergarten kid that you have to dunk on. Honestly, if you see it, you're going to be stunned at how simplistic you can approach this problem. But people see the number. Oh, it's 17. It's going to be so difficult because that's well after one because it goes in order. And then there's the first 16. And then the 17th, that's got to be more difficult because 17 farther that way. No, it doesn't work like that. Let's see what we're talking about. Let A, B, C, D be a rectangle 30 by 28. They are consecutive sides because A, B, and B, C are consecutive sets of two letters. Draw what looks like one leg slightly longer or one side slightly longer than the other. Maybe something like this. And we'll call this the 30. And we'll say that this is A, B, C, D. And B, C is 28. Now, P and Q lie on B, C, and C, D respectively, which means in the same order. Now, what I like to do is just place P here and Q here. I don't actually place them. I just want to know where I need to place them. So I write them off camera, if you will, of my mind and the thought process, just so I have an idea of where I need to figure out where they fit. So that all sides of triangle ABP, that would be AB to wherever that P is here, PCQ, that would be to wherever this point is, and QDA, Q to D to A, which are all right triangles, have integer lengths. So sometimes someone also said they didn't catch the word integer on the thing that I spoke with. And uh, this is where I say slow down a little bit. It's worth it to take a couple extra seconds in the reading because you're probably going to regain those seconds in not having painful solve process if you read everything correctly. So now it wants to know the perimeter of APQ. At this point, I'm just going to randomly place it here and we'll say over here and we'll go like this. And the main thing you want to have right now is conceptualization, meaning it doesn't matter where it's at. This could be 20 or something, right? We don't care. Don't think about those things. We don't need an exact value. Conceptually, there's a right triangle, a right triangle and a right triangle. Okay. So then what do we look at here? 30. Gosh. I oh, mean, I wish there was some concept that looked at integer lengths and in right triangles. Maybe, maybe like a dead Greek guy could have given it to us and somebody could have added the word triple, like a Pythagorean triple, right? And so you go, okay, I've got to recall my Pythagorean. What is this? This is AMC eight Pythagorean triples. Okay. So again, if you took my class, the small notebook class, we go over with this one. I call it a family type. They're not really called that, just my terminology. And you can go through a few of these, 5, 12, 13. There's an easy way to recognize them. Take the class to find out. 7, 24, 25. And you look, okay, is 30 going to be in there? Well, I could do 5 times 6, but then, because you can do multiples of these. Oh, but the 5 here times 6, is that? No. Why? Because that's a hypotenuse, and that's not. 
so can't do that. So you go this way, you got, you know, what are some other ones that are not in this kind of type? There's ones I tell you to memorize, like 8, 15, 17, and 15 is a leg, and if I double it, it's 30, and if I double 8, I get 16, and right now, right now, you're off to the races. Go really fast, right? It's just go. So 15 times 2, 8 times 2, 16, 2 times 17, 34. There we go. Now, if that's 16 and this is 28, then this is 12. If that's 12, do I know any that have 12? I could do 5, 12, 13 maybe, or I could triple this one. 9, 12, 15. I don't know yet. I need this. If I try 9 here and I put 15 here, let's try that. And I've got 30. So if that's 9, this is 21, and this is 28. What do I know that has 28? Could it be 7 times 4, 7 times 3, 7 times 5, 35, 7 times 3, 7 times 4, we've got it. 35, 50, 84, A, done. It takes even less time than that, because I'm talking to you. This problem was done 30 seconds, 40 seconds tops. After you finish reading from the start of that point, even the reading itself, you can probably complete it in 20 seconds, even reading carefully. And then 30, I mean, it kind of just jumps out. If you were to make this six times, that would have to be 72, which is kind of a problem for 28, right? And so you could keep going and check other ones in this type of, of kind, I call it a family type. And you can if you want, but probably with the lowness of the number 28, you're looking for some number that I could multiply it by something to get 30. If I had a six in these, I don't. I guess you could do six, eight, 10. Like I said, this has to be if I did 10 times three, I would need 10 times four right here, which is a good trick when you've got max 28 to use. So it's really just like that. It's just that quick. You're trying to see Pythagorean triples on a 17 on an AMC 10. Now do you feel bad for spending 10 minutes on number 11? Get it out of the thought process that I need to do every question in order. If you hit a speed bump, go around it. Go around it and say, you're not giving up. You're not admitting defeat. You're gonna come back, really, unless there's 10 other questions that are way easier and use your time and you don't get back to that. And it's fine. See, because what you're doing, you're making a trade. I'm so stubborn, I don't wanna give up on number 11 or nine or 13 that I'm gonna get that one question and give up those seven in the back. And this is a smart decision, yes. No, it is not. Learn the trick of skipping because you need to maximize your score. Other than that, I do have another small notebook class now scheduled, forgot to mention this at the beginning. It will be this Sunday from 10.30 a.m. Pacific time. Reach me at my website if you are interested in the pricing for that. See you in the next one.